18 points in the fourth quarter of la- of uh, Wednesday night's season opener against the Celtics. Um, at the TD Garden, the NBA's two-time reigning MVP after the game was thinking about the missed free throw, though, that would have tied the game with the Celtics. He missed it. But the overarching question here now is uh, more about Giannis and the future and the Bucks this season. How much pressure now that he has signed that big deal and he's staying in Milwaukee is on the Greek freak? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the pressure has shifted very clearly here. Pressure was on the Bucks last season to deliver a product that made Giannis feel good enough about staying. Well, you saw what they did in the regular season. They, they had the best record in the East, I mean, maybe in the NBA, and, and they put themselves in great position going into the postseason. The world shut down on March 12th uh, for the NBA, March 11th, and, and then you got into the bubble, and it was a different story for the Bucks. And then the questions kind of came out. Well, then they went in the offseason and did enough clearly to lock in Giannis for the, the most lucrative contract in NBA history. And when they did that, the Bucks said, we did our part. It's up to you now, Giannis. It's the first game of the season. He had 35 points, 13 boards. Played a great game. Didn't look like it in the start, but how he turned it on in the fourth quarter lets you know that this is the guy. But this is what's going to happen. When you miss a free throw like that to tie the game and extend it and you, you don't make that shot, it's just the first chip at, okay, is he going to earn this contract? It's not a big conversation now. I mean, let's be very clear. This is why I looked at last night <clears> – <throat> And I was never going to let it snowball because it's one game. But he gave you 35 points. He defended Jason Tatum very well on a fluke make, a bank shot from deep beyond the arc with an angle that's hard to bank a three. Clearly Tatum didn't mean to do it. It was good defense from Giannis. He makes the shot. Unfortunately, that luck goes the other way. You have .4 seconds left. And to me, this is what shows Giannis's ability. Game should have been over. Giannis was going to be the inbounder. They flipped it. Coach Boonholzer said, let's have Drew Holiday throw it in. By the way, Drew Holiday looked very good in his first game for the Bucks. Throws it up, and the greatness of Giannis is that he draws a foul, which wasn't really one from Tristan Thompson, to even get in position to tie the game. That's what Giannis can do, create something out of nothing. He's okay, not very good at, as a clutch guy from the, three, from the free throw line. 13 of 20 in clutch situations last year from the free throw line. When I think about Giannis go win me a game, it ain't going to be from the free throw line but it is going to be him generating through athleticism and strength an opportunity to potentially do it. And that's what he did on the inbound pass. He missed a free throw, so what? They're going to be fine, but this pressure to answer your question is absolutely on Giannis because if these moments happen, they're going to be magnified. Okay, so here's Giannis. You can hear from him straight from his mouth how he felt about missing that free throw that would have tied the game last night. I'm upset about it and... But you can't change it, so it's done. You know, I, I missed the I missed the second one. Um, hopefully, when I'm in the same position, I can make I can make the next one. And uh, that's the mentality you gotta have. But obviously, you know, there's a uh, a little bit of weight on your shoulder because you know if you miss, that's it for your team. And you know, I'm a winner. I want to do whatever it takes for my team to win. Uh, but you know, you learn from every every situation that uh, basketball puts you in. Okay, so he's a winner. He said he's upset. He, I'm upset. Oh, upset. <laughs> he was upset about it last night, obviously. The bigger question for me with the Bucks, I don't think there's as much pressure on Giannis as there is on Coach Budenholzer. Like, last year in the bubble, I think I said it to you every game. I'm like, why doesn't Giannis play more minutes? He doesn't play nearly as many minutes as some of these superstars do. As many as LeBron does. And you can go on down the line with every superstar that played in that bubble. Giannis played the least amount of minutes. And that falls directly on the coaching staff. And so for me, you've already locked up your superstar at this point. Now it's up to you to play him in clutch situations, even if he's quote-unquote tired. Like, I don't want to hear that late in, but in season anymore. That's not Giannis requesting that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, it, that's why I think the pressure is not solely on Giannis. It's more on the coaching staff. It's more on Budenholzer. Well, yeah, Budenholzer's gifted a very good team with, with arguably the greatest player in the NBA, given his age and what part of his career he is in. Um, it's an argument to be made. I'd still take uh, KD and LeBron over him, uh, but yet still. You'd yeah. still take KD and LeBron over Giannis? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and, and Giannis is a guy that's come out and saying, even in post game from yesterday, you're going to ex- expect to see me play more minutes. I've had these conversations with, with Coach Budenholzer, and I fully expect to be logging more minutes. It's something he wants. It's something he'll be granted. But I hope. 
it's a non-story from last night. It's an unfortunate bounce of a Jason Tatum three that was well defended, a missed free throw uh, that he shorted on the on the second of of two. He's your guy, and, and they made the right choice. And nobody in Milwaukee is going to be questioning this decision to pay him two hundred twenty. Okay, let's move now to the Celtics. So the Celtics win the game last night against the Milwaukee Bucks, as we've mentioned now, I think five times. Um, and Jason Tatum is the one that had the game winning three. And so you have been saying for a long time, Jay, to me that Jason Tatum now needs to solidify himself as a superstar. Gordon Hayward. He's already a star. He's already a star, but it's time now to, to put him in the category of superstar. And this is now the year to do it. There's no more Gordon Hayward on that team. Although he's probably a star in the NBA that I can't believe no one's even speaking about that. He's just no longer on a team and no one cares. Cause maybe he didn't, add as much value in the bubble because he was hurt, et cetera. So I guess my question to you is Jason Tatum um, even said himself, he didn't feel like he played that well last night, but he played well when it counted. And so now this is his year to go out and prove that he can be compared among the elites. He is an all NBA third team guy last year. It's great. He's a star. Jalen Brown is, is one B on that team a star as well. And, and, and Kemba too. All, those guys were all very good last year. But this year, I want Jason Tatum to try and contend for a first-team guy. There's a lot of stars in the league. It's probably going to be very difficult. But Jason Tatum has the tools, has the skill set to do it. And him demanding that shot, having the confidence to take that shot, it's clear right. that's his shot. Right. It was a fluke that it went in, but he wants those moments. What That game delivered last night, which was great, is two stars trying to seize the moment when it was winning time. Tatum with a bank three was able to get it done. Giannis hit, went short on the second of the free throws. Jason Tatum, a moment like that, those are the ones you want to see more of. I expect to see more of. A Giannis missed free throw, not being able to deliver, I don't expect to see deal. a lot of right. those. Not a big deal. But for Jason Tatum and for Celtics fans, you want this star to take an even bigger step and become an even more massive star. I wouldn't say Jason Tatum is a face of the league. Right. He's not to that either. point. No. And I've heard Jay Will and, and Keyshawn and those guys have this conversation on the show. It's it's a fascinating one. It's a very radio conversation. Like, who are the true superstars in the NBA? Jason Tatum's not there. Jason Tatum can get there. It's going to require more winning and more, even more gaudy numbers and moments like yesterday. He has the ability to deliver and check all three of those boxes. I look forward to seeing it. All right. Straight talk wireless. No contract. No com- No compromise. Questions swirling around who will be the Patriots quarterback this weekend. They were testing and retesting players in Houston. There's no question. This is a difficult start uh, to the Rockets season. And first year coach Steven Silas was hoping to make his debut tonight. Uh, not quite yet in Houston. Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Zubin. And so if you're James Harden, do you feel like you've acted like a leader? Is that what a person that you want to build a business around does? The NBA has fined Harden $50,000. I call by them all. Yeah, I'm burning it up. DPG said you should be turning it up. So I would say James Harden is making himself less and less appealing to potential trade suitors. It feels like almost by the minute. James is the boss. He will get his money. You will pay him. And he will also submarine your franchise if you don't trade him. Hold up. Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Zubin on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and just tell your smart speaker to play ESPN. Merry Christmas to everyone. It is Christmas Eve, and we are holding it down in a very robust red. <laughs> robust? You hit me with... Bro- that is cold. Robust for those red on, for those, onesie this morning. For those on a radio that can't see us, <laughs> this is my worst nightmare come true. <laughs> A Christmas hop, uh, holiday, what would you say, ritual of ours? Yes. Okay. Uh, every tradition. year. Tradition. Yes, thank you. Tradition uh, <laughs> is to wear a onesie for, for Shay's side of the family. Family onesies for Christmas Eve and for Christmas. And <laughs> never did I think we'd make it on the national airwaves where I'd be wearing that very same onesie. But here we are. Here we are. And yes, robust is probably the best way to describe <laughs> this red, red onesie. Um, I'm Shay Cornette. He is Jordan Cornette. Of course, we're filling in for Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Don't use my government name. Not right now. <laughs> I don't want people to identify me. Like we're this. just, you know, trying to keep it loose and have a little fun because it is what? Christmas What? This is Eve. not is loose. This is not loose. <laughs> It'll get looser throughout the day. I told me he's sustain it now all the way till tomorrow, until tomorrow night. So it's going to be the smelliest, robust red onesie you ever. <laughs>
right, we're, we're presented by Progressive Insurance and all guests. Join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. So we're asking you today, because it is Christmas Eve, what's the best gift that your team has ever given you? The phone number is 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 729-3776. You can also hit us up on Twitter. It's at KJNZ. I'm at Shay Pepler. He's at Shake or Shay. He's at Jordan Cornette. Tell us what is the best gift that your team has ever given you. You can be a part of Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zuba Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. We're asking you today again, what is the best gift that your team has ever gave you? ESPN Nation is presented by Dr. Pepper. The college football season's winding down, and so is your favorite. Dr. Pepper loving college football town, Fansville. Head to a store near you to treat your inner college football fan to an ice cold 20 ounce Dr. Pepper today. Okay, sports. Let's get to it. It is the holidays, but we do need to talk a little bit of sports. So yesterday we got the unfortunate news that day two in the NBA was already going to be thrown for a little bit of a loop. Rockets and Thunder was postponed. It was scheduled for Wednesday night um, and it has been postponed as Houston did not have the league required eight players to proceed with the game. The NBA said three Rockets players had returned tests that were either positive or inconclusive. And then you've got contract tracing. You also have an injury to the team. So they just didn't have enough guys to go. On top of that, so you have a postponed game, which I think the reaction to that would be like, here we go. Because this is typically what has happened across leagues when they get going is you have these positive tests. Yeah. That's that's kind of a different conversation. The bigger conversation here is still James Harden. Somehow, it's James Harden. So there is video circulating of 